Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema Sit Down. Ooh, man, we've got ourselves a masterpiece on our hands today. What Todd Phillips has done with Joaquin Phoenix and this character in this movie. Talk about like having your head explode and just being completely blown away by something on the big screen. This movie was that for the old Seaman. And I know not everybody's feeling this way. There's a lot of divisiveness with this film. A lot of people are, are you know, on both sides of things, good and bad. And quite frankly, I just don't get the people who are on the bad side. And I'm going to tell you why, man. So why don't you pull up a chair, take a seat. We're getting ready to talk spoiler free about Joker, um, the latest from Mr. Todd Phillips. That's right. The guy who made the Hangover movies just made one of the most artistic, dark, is a very, very dark film, right? Like, I mean, as to be expected, it's a Joker movie with no Batman, right? So with nobody to punch Joker in the face, probably going to have a pretty bleak, dreary, kind of depressing ending, and that's pretty much what we get uh, but what Todd Phillips does with this movie with this story I just don't get the criticisms of of, of it promoting gun violence or 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 you know just just being so dark it, it shouldn't be shown anywhere or you know people questioning whether or not this is something that should be banned from film because it's so dark and so depressing and it's disturbing to people well, it should be disturbing to people, man, because when you watch this film, I see a director and a writer in Todd Phillips who's looking at America, right? Making America look at itself in the mirror and going, this is stuff that's going on in this country. Really, really, really poor mental health control and standards. Uh, gun control is out of control. And, you know, a world where... You know, poverty versus the wealthy is a really big gap, and the wealthy kind of continue to find ways to keep the lesser people down, specifically the ones who are in poverty. And when you live in a world like that, and then you watch a movie that harps on those three things, and, and you know, look, I'm not saying that everything is dark and dreary in the world, but a lot of the things that, that Todd Phillips is talking about in this movie, I think the reason it's so disturbing and it's bothering people so much is because it's hitting close to home, which is what it's supposed to do. Uh, this this is material that's extremely relevant. And it's like he wanted to talk about these three things and how when they go unchecked and, and a mentally unstable person can get their hands on a weapon, how absolutely terrible it can be. Yes, you empathize with Joker in this movie. You can sympathize with Joker in this movie. What happens to him at the beginning, the way he's bullied, the fact that he is mentally unhealthy and not receiving correct care. Yes, it's very easy to sympathize with that man. But the minute he starts doing evil things and starts to transform into the Joker, you don't sympathize, you don't empathize with that character at all. The Joker is bad. Like, he is so bad. And it's so apparent that he's bad that you're not rooting for him at the end of the movie if anything you are disturbed because watching this film feels so real because it feels like we're in a world where someone who's mentally unstable could start some sort of an uprising and what happens in the film isn't d direct right like it's not like it was an intended thing for arthur to do but he became a rallying cry for a group of people and we're one crazy person away from that not being completely unrealistic. And that's scary. And I think that's what Todd Phillips was shooting for. He wanted to make a movie that would hit people in their core and remind them, like, if these things aren't addressed, this world is not too far away. It's not unimaginable. And the best prism to put that kind of a story to get the most eyeballs on it the Joker is a brilliant decision. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like Todd Phillips was trying to make a Joker origin movie. It feels like Todd Phillips had a lot to say about very important subject matter in this country right now. And the Joker was the best prism for it. And when you take, you know, as he said, like the idea of the killing joke where he was a failed comedian. And you blend it up with a bunch of, you know, Marty Scorsese inspired films um, like Taxi Driver and uh, the, the King of Comedy really feels like a direct mashup of those two movies as you kind of watch this delusional mentally unhealthy comic go down this 
terrible rabbit hole uh, that just takes him to such this terribly dark place, which embodies everything that the Joker is. And when you watch the care and just the way this movie is handled, it is so artistically beautiful. Uh, the cinematography is unbelievable. The transformation of, of a lot of a lot of it was in Newark um, and other places around the tri-state, transforming it into a 1980s vibe. It, it just it feels so authentic. It looks so great. Um, I just watched a Vanity Fair video uh, where Todd Phillips breaks down the opening sequence, and when I, I tell you, man, I sat when I saw the video, I was like, oh, I need to watch this because you sit in the theater and you watch that opening 12 minutes, and you just go, that's enough right there. Like if you just gave me a 12 minute movie, the, like the, the 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes ends right when the title comes up, Joker. And that 12 minutes, man, just lays all the seeds of what will become the Joker in, in a way where it's like, if you just gave that to me as a short film and that was all we ever got, which would be tragic when you get to see everything that's in this film, but it, it, it would be enough. It would be satisfying because you'd be like, yeah, I could see how this is going to get to that. And that's why Joker was the perfect prism to, to kind of bring this movie in. And the way it's shot, like like I said, the cinematography, everything about it is eerie or uneasy. The, the way the slow push-ins, the, the hot, right up on you close-ups. There's a lot of that in that first 12 minutes where you feel everything man it's claustrophobic sometimes it makes you uncomfortable just the way that it's shot the score the score is brilliant and phillips mentioned that like he he got parts of the score before they had shot things in the movie and he would play it on set just to kind of get people into that space and let joaquin work and wonderful things came because of that score man like different pieces the 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 the, the sequence that we've seen in the trailers where he's he's dancing in the bathroom that wasn't going to be that scene and it wasn't working and they were talking and Phil's like, I got this piece of uh, music. Let, let me play it. Uh, you know that, and this, it was a piece of the score and then Joaquin Phoenix does one of the most amazing scenes in the film and that level of creativeness and, and thought behind making everything uneasy. It does. You feel uncomfortable the whole movie and it is unbelievably dark and very depressing. Um, and that's something that you should be warned of before going in because if those are things that hit too close to home, then yes, this movie might be too much, but I don't think it's trying to promote any of this stuff. And to rob yourself of enjoying one of the best performances I've seen probably in the last 10 years, Joaquin Phoenix is transcendent in this movie. And what I love is that he's Arthur Fleck in this movie. Yes, he becomes Joker for me almost right at the end of the movie really like he becomes the joker by then but like you're seeing this transformation of arthur fleck and the character is so interesting the take they have on it and the fact that he's mentally unstable and how this all leads to what happens in the film phoenix just brings it and takes it to places that are just breathtaking man and mind-blowing and it's one of those things where it's like i walked out and you feel real bleak but also like excited and, and and I don't know amped because what I watched was just it was magical from from an artistry standpoint and Phoenix does transform man just becomes Arthur Fleck and then literally transforms into the Joker to the point where it's like I know they don't want to do a sequel that's at least the initial thing that came out there but even Joaquin Phoenix has kind of slowly said I really enjoy playing this character and it wasn't a place where I went really really dark like we were laughing on set all the time and like having a good time making the film but the character is just so interesting like maybe it's something I want to go back to please because i would love to see him be the joker for a full film but what we get with arthur fleck is fascinating and it makes you understand how you get to that point and again plays more like a warning of like when these types of things go unchecked really terrible stuff can happen and it's just i don't know that's just that's the way i took it and maybe the most impressive thing from a writing director cinematography acting standpoint has to do with the laughter the joker's laugh is so iconic and it's been done so many different ways from heath ledger to caesar romero to jack nicholson or mark hamill to joaquin phoenix and how they use laughter in this movie is i think the thing that transforms this thing into something special where it's it's fascinating to watch from a character study perspective of how laughter is something that's painful and also healing 
and the way that gets and now it's messed up in the heel like the way it heals Arthur is twisted but to watch the transformation of, of this thing that comes from a lot of pain into something that is so maniacal and evil it is the perfect transformation into Joker and, and the laughter plays such a crucial role and I, I thought it was wonderful the way that Phillips and, and Phoenix played with that concept uh, and gave you the ability to have all these different styles of laughter and then even though Mr. Todd Phillips said like outside of just taking the concept of like a failed comic from uh, the, the killing joke this wasn't tied to any comics this wasn't like a comic book movie it, it, no it, it's it's not. It doesn't feel like a comic book movie. Yes, it's set in Gotham. But Todd Phillips does one of the most amazing comic adaptations I've ever seen. He plays with the material and the setting in a way where you get to the end of the movie and you walk out and you go, Wait, what? How did nobody ever do that? Wow. Like for something that wasn't coming from a comic book place... Maybe one of the most fascinating comic book story threads exists in this movie. And it's one of those things where it just kind of makes you go, you look at the numbers and, you know, like I said, looking for a vehicle to get a lot of eyeballs on it. This thing is crushing. They absolutely crushed the box office last week and almost a hundred million dollars. Um, it, it's, it's doing big things. Lots of people are seeing this movie and, you know, I, I think it's good. That there's conversation to be had because there should be conversation i think that's one of the things that these guys wanted to have this movie do is spark make people talk but oh gosh like when you see what it's doing from a business side and you hear joaquin and, and todd talking about the creation of it and how interesting the character is and then you see what todd phillips does at the end of this movie god please bring me one more just if like if there's no way to bring joaquin into the dc universe i need one more with him and it's just it's it's a tremendous role it's and it's it's different right like he's arthur flex so you don't have to directly compare him to any of the other people specifically you know heath ledger which is the immediate comparison that everybody's gonna go to but it's a different role he's playing a different character and that's the thing i love about the joker is that you can play a different character within this character all the time he's that impressive he's that complex he has that many false narratives and that's one of the things that they play with in this movie too is the idea of the false narrative like what joker wants you to think versus what's actually real they play with that in the movie too and it's one of those things where it's like everything in this feels so authentic and true to the joker but also feels very tangible and that's why i think it's so disturbing and you know i've seen darker things than this movie so some of the the, the hatred and, and vile that it's getting it, it doesn't compute for me because I, I like i said i've seen darker stuff than this and I, if you were watch what i think todd phillips wanted you to see this is more of a thing that i think is very relevant and should it should be hitting close to home and it should be disturbing you because this is stuff that we as a country and as people kind of need to look at us in the mirror and go, these are things we got to address, or that's not too far away, man. Um, and I, that's the thing that, that about the movie that I think you should take, is it can get you to that type of place, and you might not feel great, but wow, man, from an artistic standpoint, from an acting standpoint, directing, writing, cinematography, this this thing is tremendous. And I, I've seen uh, you know, a lot of the Academy voters are starting to see the movie now and comment on it, and there's a lot of mixed you know it's a lot of mixed reactions and i hope that doesn't affect it man because this thing deserves to be recognized because as a film wow man like wow uh, I, I was so impressed that the guy who brought us the hangover could bring something that's this tremendous from a filmmaking standpoint you can't deny the craftsmanship in this one and and for me i just thought everything played into a joker origin perfectly while, you know, addressing subject matter that I think is important. And I think Todd Phillips nailed those things. I mean, people said that, like, one of the things I saw was, like, it doesn't have, like, anything to say about the things it's doing. I'm like, what movie are you guys watching? So I hope people don't get deterred by the negative reviews. I, I think you should be aware that it is dark. It is sinister. It is violent. Uh, but not, like, overly violent. I've seen more violent films than this. Um, but you, you should know that it, it, it's going to take you to a place that don't feel great. Like I said, there's no Batman to punch Joker in the face in this movie. So 
You're not going to get a happy ending, and it might be hard to put a smile on your face, but, oh, the things they do, especially if you're a comic book fan. If you're a comic book fan, this is a must-see movie. Because, like I said, Todd Phillips does some stuff that I was like, I can't believe this hasn't existed before. It was amazing. So, if you if you like filmmaking, this is a must-see movie. If you like comic books, this is a must-see movie. If you like acting at its absolute finest, this is a must-see movie, man. I absolutely love Joker. But now I want to know what you're thinking, because this movie is splitting people in a lot of different directions, and while I don't really understand some of the hatred, I respect everybody has an opinion, and I want to know what you guys are thinking. So please, 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 I feel like this is a movie that, that should stir up a lot of conversation. I would love to have a lot of conversation with this movie, because I think there's a lot of things to talk about, both from a film standpoint and from a, a society and you know, meaning standpoint. So I want you to go hit those comments down below, man. Let me know if you liked this movie, if you didn't like this movie, and if you didn't, what was it that pushed you from not liking it? And if you didn't like it, could you still, you know, respect and appreciate the craftsmanship and the acting and the things that went into the movie? And of course, if you love this movie, t tell me, man. Like, tell me what, what was getting you, man. Was it Joaquin? Was it the cinematography? Was it everything? Was it the score? The score in this movie is brilliant. Uh, was it the comic book stuff that kind of creeps its way in? Um, let me know everything you're thinking about Joker down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new, you want to come hang out with the old C-Man, maybe, maybe, maybe if I see this again... We might do some spoiler talk. There's some stuff at the end of this movie that I got to talk about. And if you want to know about it, man, I need you to come join the Cinema Sit Down Squad. I need you to hit that subscribe button, and then I need you to hit the little bell. So you can get alerts about any time I'm talking Joker. Uh, obviously, the award season as we approach that and what this movie is going to do and what kind of comic book things and, and, and maybe achievements this movie might, might get. Uh, you want to follow along with all that stuff, man. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Get those alerts uh, so you can come and hang out, man. Uh so I love hanging out with you guys, um, and, and I really hope that we get to talk about this one, because, ooh, man, it's such a good one to talk about. Uh, so that's it, man. That's all I got to say. So we're the C-Man's Cinema Sit Down. I'm the C-Man, and I'm signing off. Peace out. Well, I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. C-Man's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet, and you want to come check out all the C-Man goodies, Join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.